Hey guys and welcome, my name is Nick O'Leary and this week we're looking at EQ and more specifically what EQ is in the Mercedes-Benz world. Now EQ is actually a sub-brand of Mercedes-Benz and Mercedes-Benz actually own a couple of sub-brands actually. So these include things, anything from smart cars, AMG high performance vehicles and then EQ. So let's take a look at what EQ is. And the name EQ actually stands for electric intelligence and is actually derived from Mercedes-Benz own brand values called emotion and intelligence. EQ also leads the way on effectively getting rid of the internal combustion engine uh, by around about 2035 and 2040. But there are several steps to this, uh, even starting just a few years ago. So EQ has different kind of levels of electric that you will find in the cars. And these can be divided into these sections. So these can vary from EQ boost, EQ power, or even an EQ battery electric vehicle. And these are set out in the order of electricity found in the car. So EQ boost offers a really small amount to help reduce emissions and improve performance and MPG. EQ power is the next step, which requires a little bit of user interaction. With these types of vehicles, you'll need to plug them in to gain the most from them. But most importantly, to complete a journey, you don't have to plug them in. And then finally, we have EQ battery electric vehicles, which offer a 100% electric experience where you have to plug in. Primarily, you do this at home and you'd wake up every day with it fully charged. So how does EQ boost work? Well, actually, if you go back a few years to around about 2012, 2013, all manufacturers started to introduce a thing called start-stop technology. And you'll know this one, this is when you come to some traffic lights and as you come to a complete stop, the engine switches off to save fuel and of course increase your uh, mass per gallon. Now EQ Boost is an extended version of this. So with start-stop technology, your engine turns off when you basically become stationary uh, while you're waiting at traffic lights. EQ Boost will turn it off further back up the road so as you're slowing down. Because if you think about it, you don't need your engine on as you're slowing down. All you need is your brakes. So this is what EQ Boost does. But why is it called Boost? Well, because it can also make you go quicker. So let's have a little demo to see what it can do. So this is how it works on the road. As you're driving, say cruising at 40 miles an hour, and you approach some traffic lights, when you take your foot off of the accelerator, the engine can, in some instances, switch off. And the second you take your foot off of the brake, it'll start back up again. It can also provide an acceleration boost to help with overtaking or for sporty driving. Oh, and I should also mention, EQBoost does not require any plug-in or any user interaction because of the little electricity it uses. Now EQ Power, on the other hand, uses way, way more electricity than what we just saw with EQ Boost. So EQ Boost assists the engine and can turn the engine off, uh, but there's no all electric driving with that mode, with the EQ Boost. With this car, EQ Power, you can drive on all electric. And the range, it does vary on the car because obviously it depends on how big the battery is. But in Mercedes, it can range anything from 20 miles from the first generation hybrids up to one of the newest ones, 66 miles. So about 20 to 66, depends on the model. So on this car, for example, it can uh, range anything from about uh, 40 to 44 miles. It does kind of depend on the traffic you encounter. And of course, if you're using your heating, because you don't forget, if you have the engine off, the car has to generate its own heat so you will lose mileage from this. But nine times out of 10, it's always cheaper running on electricity. So this is where the incentives come in for looking at a hybrid in the first place. So Mercedes-Benz also produce and manufacture battery electric vehicles, like this one here. So let's just do a very, very quick recap of what we've seen so far. So EQ Boost has that small electric motor that turns the engine off uh, as and when it needs to, to try and save fuel and improve efficiency and that kind of thing. EQ Power, on the other hand, has that dedicated battery in the back which offers all electric driving, so plug-in hybrid. When you move on to something like this, there is no engine. So it's got an electric motor and of course a battery, 
and of course you must plug these in. Now it's recommended you actually plug these in every night, so you would need a driveway or garage to kind of get the most benefits from that. But it's there kind of to help reduce emissions and of course to meet the government's targets in the year 2035 and 2040. Not sure what year it's going to happen yet, but as of then onwards, you'll only be able to buy cars like this, which are fully electric. Now currently in the Mercedes-Benz range, if you include the smart cars as a whole, because there's a 4.2 and a 4.4, 4.2 uh, for two people and 4.4 for four people, uh, if you include them as a whole, there are actually three electric cars in the whole range. So you've got the smart cars, EQC and EQV. Now, fun fact here, Mercedes-Benz have actually patented the whole alphabet from EQA throughout to EQZ. So if you kind of use your imagination, you know how many models there are in Mercedes-Benz? There's quite a few. So the ones I've seen rumors of that are not officially confirmed, but I've seen rumors of, I've seen EQA, EQS, uh, I've even heard of an EQG. I'm not sure if that will be an electric G-Wagon, but who knows? But yeah, currently right now, there are three electric models in the Mercedes-Benz range. Uh, they're completely electric. The range, obviously, on the smart cars is going to be a lot less than what you'd see in an EQC or EQV, mainly because of the battery size. So these are the batteries in these are actually quite small compared to an EQC because of the car size is also small. So here you can see the size of the smart car battery. So it's 17.2 kilowatt hours compared to the EQC's 80 and the EQV's 90 kilowatt hours. And the range is obviously going to be a little bit less. Now this isn't a bad thing. You have to bear in mind that the smart car is a city car. So for my type of driving I do, it's absolutely perfect because I very rarely go above the 71 to 81 miles. But of course the EQC and EQV, uh, these have a lot further range, mainly because of their bigger battery. And there we go, guys. That concludes this week's video on EQ terminology. Now, of course, there are a few models that have EQ boost and EQ power and even EQ battery electric vehicles as of today. So there's quite a wide variety of choice for you to choose from. But if you don't think it's right for you just yet, there's a load more on their way. Now, if you wanted to know more about the EQC, I have actually already done a video on that and the things to seriously consider. Uh, click on this little pop-up just here to see that particular video. And likewise, guys, if you liked today's video, do hit that subscribe button and don't forget that like button. Until next time, we'll see you all then.